Here is a 2024 Hyundai Kona inline in Atlas white over black over black. This is a refresh for the Kona in which it looks a little bit more sporty. And a lot of that is because this is the inline. It's the only spec in the Ford trims that is going to be the most unique. Plus you're getting 43 horsepower and 63 pound-feet of torque more than the SE and the SEL because it's a completely different engine. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over some pros and cons. The problem that I have with the Kona and comparable rivals starting up front projected LED headlights and daytime runnings. I like the light bar that outlines more or less the whole hood of the Hyundai because it looks a little bit more futuristic but it keeps it sporty because the inline gets its specific grille, the gloss black elements that's going to surround it. And because this is a front wheel drive, 6.9 inches of clearance. You can get over eight inches of clearance with the all wheel drive. But when you go inline or limited, you get the same power option. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder, not the 2.0. So we get 190 horsepower underneath the hood with 195 pound feet of torque paired to an eight speed automatic transmission, achieving 26 MPGs for the city and 32 MPGs for the highway. More unique touches come because it's a standard 17 inch wheel when you go to the SE. SEL gives you 18 inch, 19 inch is going to be unique to the inline and then you will also receive a 19 inch for the limited inline badging. Gloss black on the side view mirrors with LED turn signals. The gloss black elements is only going to be on the inline for the side view mirror. Around the window trim you're going to get the matte black, the lower skirt gets the matte black, and another major difference when you're going underneath the inline is the intelligent variable transmission instead of the 8-speed. The refresh comes into play on the side, making it look a little bit more sporty opposed to the Chevy Trax. And when you're comparing that against this, you're going to pay a couple grand more for this, but it's going to be a little bit faster. Plus, you're going to get the 8-speed automatic transmission, and it's not going to be a turbocharged three-cylinder engine, which a lot of people complain about that. Hyundai's keeping it with a four-cylinder, and it's going to have more power than the Volkswagen Taos. The Mazda CX-30 is going to see, have the same rear suspension with the Torsum Beam. The major difference, though, with this is it's going to have the most aggressive exit. With the lower roof spoiler that is unique to the inline, you get the light bar that goes across, LED tail lights. the lower gets the satin aluminum with the diffuser and dual exhaust outlet, so it stresses performance in such a small segment. What I like about this, opposed to the prior gen, is they're giving this retro look, so when you look at the lower quarter panel, it looks like a car, even though this is a smaller SUV. Quick release going into 25.5 cubic feet of storage bag holders. We got a ton of them, so it makes it a little bit easier for anything that you want to put underneath the floor has some storage and like most Hondas, you can lower the floor to give yourself an additional i would say with this cover maybe two inches split fold the rear bench is going to be a little bit more work though because we're going to take this privacy shade out and if you're tall like me you could do it in the back otherwise you're going to have to go to the back door to open it up because they don't have an actual area to fold it down. That's going to increase cargo to 63.7 cubic feet. This is the inline, so we got more power. Let's go inside and start it up so you can hear that exhaust note. Ten-way power seat adjustment. This is an Alcantara in badging, heated front seats, six-way manual adjustment for the passenger. Leatherette goes to the limited. Cloth is in the base in the SEL. SEL convenience adds heated front seats. Headroom and leg room. The inline gets the sport pedals. There isn't any pass through, but this is low enough and we'll get to the storage compartments in a second. Passenger has the same amount of space as the driver with a storage cubby between the dashboard. We get the red that goes into the air vents, a one panel, two screens, both with a 10.25 and a speaker on the side, all of which get the 10.25. Navigation starts on the SEL with the convenience package. We have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, 
AM FM streaming Bluetooth audio, Hyundai Blue Link, switching to reverse with a reverse camera full trajectory. Doesn't cover the whole screen until you click here. And then it's just kind of a bubble face, but that's also derived because of this driver focus layout. And you can also line it up for a tow if I could get to it. Dual climate control settings start on the SEL. QI wireless charger on the SEL. When you add the convenience package, you pretty much get most of the features that you'll get in the inline. USB ports, driving mode select, the key fob for the new Kona. Now this is what I was meaning by the storage. It's optimal. Open this and now you have cup holders. You still have more storage back here because this opens up, little storage tray, and it's a deep pocket. So they do utilize a lot of space. To put it into gear, you get the little rocker right here. Leather wrap steering wheel, perforated on the sides, in badging, which is only on the inline. 10.25, we'll start on the SEL with the convenience package but it's gonna be standard once you go up the trim. You can go through an array of information for the driver and you can change to sport or normal. The dashboard and the door panels can figure in together and it's soft materials everywhere except for where it needs to be. One touch up and down for the front windows, a large storage pocket, Bose 8 speakers comes into play on the inline and up. Backseat headroom, not bad, but this is folded back so it's more reclined. Sitting upright, it's still pretty good. Leg space, not a problem with the seat in the position I'd be sitting, except no storage, only a storage pocket with the net on the passenger side. Two USB ports, air vents, armrest with cup holders, and the door gets the same segment as the front, and it's still not soft where it needs to be, except you only get a beverage holder in the back or a flask holder. Sliding into the center, we have this seat pushed back purposely so you can see that it would be a little bit tight if you're taller than me. Sharing some feet space, but really it's the butt space and the shoulder space that start to be compromised. Headroom isn't bad because it's carved out for you even though you sit up higher in the center. 190 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. Eight-speed automatic transmission when you go inline or when you go limited trim. Anything in the SE or SEL will be the IVT, which is a basic CVT transmission. They have to change the configuration for the wordage. We have it in sport mode so you can see the performance. Here we go. Smooth driving vehicle. I dislike that we have a torsum beam rear. It's the same thing in the Mazda CX-30 and the Mazda 3. The Mazda CX-30 will be faster when you go to basically comparable pricing because you're going to get a turbocharger of 250 horsepower, things no joke. But taking some bins in the road, both two of them are not going to be the case for that. So you're losing a little bit of that sport feel. But I do like that the inline sets itself apart from all the trims, meaning the steering wheel, the exterior, the interior also boasts a lot of inline specs in which that's kind of why you go to this tier. Plus you're getting the upgraded engine over that 2.0 liter. 2.0 liter is efficient for your day in and day out use, but anything with more power, I mean 43 horsepower more and 63 pound feet of torque more, will get this thing motivated a little bit quicker. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons, starting off with the pros of the refresh. They did a good job making it look more futuristic and keeping it simplified. It's a little bit more boxy, rugged, but they took ruggedness to a different level in the sense of it looks electrified, but it's combustion engine. So I like that we're still getting a four cylinder opposed to a three cylinder turbocharged like you would get in the Chevy Trax or in the Buick. I think the Buick, they did a great job with the refresh. Same thing with the Trax, it's just the engine, a lot of people are kind of not so happy with the choice. They do give you a six-speed automatic transmission. This will have more power than both of those variants. Plus, it'll have more power than the Volkswagen Taos. Turn radius, it's gonna get about two lanes. I wish it was a little tighter.
you sit up a lot higher the windscreen is large the windows are also large even though they look sleek outside so i like that they keep that sporty heritage to the inline and i like the alcantara seats because it just kind of holds you a little bit better wish it was a little bit more wide for the buttocks area Some other pros about the vehicle is the infotainment screen is relatively easy to use and you still have actual buttons. It is driver focused, but it's not so much where the passenger isn't going to be engaged and you have plenty of storage throughout the front. The back is going to lack a little bit in the door pocket, but this is also known with more of the smaller variants for the Hondas. Cargo capacity is good. The big problem that I have with the Kona is they still haven't addressed the seats for the front and the back. Because I'm tall, my knees sit upwards and I don't have a lot of room to necessarily move them because the shifter is right in the way of my right knee. And they don't have any manual cushion extensions, which would help a little bit with that because I have the seat contoured as much as I can possibly do it, but I still have a good, I would say four to five inches of my knees just sitting up into the air. So for a long journey, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, even though it's a smooth drive. And when I'm thinking rivals, the seat setting to them, a lot of it is going to be a little bit more comfortable predominantly because we don't have the shifter right here. It's just a little too low. And yeah, you can adjust the steering wheel, but even adjusting it more, then it's just gonna make me drive like this. So it's not going to be as pleasant again for that long journey. Performance wise, it's pretty good. Everyday drive ticks the box for that. It feels wide inside, boasting a lot more space. The steering has a little bit of weight to it. And it's a smaller vehicle, so getting in and out of traffic is a little bit more ideal. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Brandon Hyundai for giving us this 2024 Hyundai Kona inline for our car review. Off the line from a green light. The soundtrack makes it feel quicker than it actually is, but because of the way you sit in the vehicle, it still feels fast. And comparing it to day in and day out use, opposed to at a stoplight or off the line performance, we're going about 20, give her a go. The gears engage pretty good. You're gonna feel a little touch of lag, but then it kind of takes off about 2.5 RPMs. So overall, even though it's a small engine, it still gets the job done.